reach towards you, Jesus.
expectations we have come with all sicknesses we have come with all challenges before you this morning and Lord we choose to lay them at the feet of your son Jesus Christ Lord I want to commit this your children into your hands I may not know what they are going through but Heavenly Father it's my prayer this morning May you grant them the desire of their hearts, O oh God, this morning. May you be with them. May you minister to them. For those who have given up King of Glory, may you be their hope. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And Lord, we now open our hearts before you. And we pray that may you speak to us. We thank you, Lord, for the ministers. We thank you, Lord, for the preacher. We thank you for all your people who have joined in this service, Lord. We declare your blessing upon all of us. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you're very welcome. Turn to your neighbor and wave at your neighbor. Give a smile to your neighbor as you welcome your neighbor in the presence of God. You are all very welcome for this 9 o'clock service. We are very sorry we've started late. Forgive us. Amen. Forgive us. Uh, it's a whole communion service, so we'll continue with the order of service. The Lord be with you. You may be seated. This is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May we join in that prayer and pray together almighty god to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by your spirit so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through jesus christ our lord amen the summer of the law hear these words of our lord jesus christ you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The sec this is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The collect of the day. Today is the 15th Sunday after trinity so may we all join in the collect and pray together keep we beseech you O oh lord your church with your perpetual mercy and because the fertility of man without you cannot be fall keep us forever by your help from all things and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we all stand up. For those who are outside, you are all very welcome. And this morning we are blessed to have Bethel Judah leading us. So let's put our hands together as we welcome them. But let's put our hands together to, well, to, 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 to give thanks to the Lord for bringing us together in his presence. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Praise the Lord. We are here because of God. We are breathing because of God. We are smiling because of God. So let's give him the praise. Our hands, our feet, our whole body. 
will sing hallelujah to the Lord. Let's sing that one more time. 
because you are the, the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end you are your
Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the one who was and is and is to come. You truly are Yahweh. You are Lord. You are the great I am. You are holy. You are enthroned. You are sovereign and you are ruling. And so, Father, we acknowledge you this morning as Yahweh. Father, help us to know you as Yahweh, as the one who was and is to come, as the one who is holding all things together, the one who is, is holding in the palm of your hands all of our lives. Father, we know you this morning as Yahweh. Father, also this morning, we, on this day, on this UCU Sunday, we thank you for the ministry of UCU over so many years now. Father, we thank you for the lives that have been transformed in that university academically, but also those lives who have been transformed with character and people of integrity. We think of countless church leaders across this country and even around the world whose lives have been impacted by UCU. And so, Father, we give you thanks for that university. And we look forward with it to the coming years. And we ask that it would continue to be a center of academic excellence, but also a center of transformation of the hearts, of transformation of lives. Father, we ask that you would continue to bless that university. We pray the same for here as well, for Macquarie University and for us as a church. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say the words of the grace as we sit down and receive the ministry of the word. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. God bless you. morning church and praise the Lord our day's reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9 beginning with verse 1 Genesis chapter 9 beginning with verse 1 It reads, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat the flesh with its life. That is its blood. And for your and for you and for your life blood I will require a reckoning. From every beast I will require it and from man. From his fellow man I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Verse six. Whoever sheds blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. Verse 7. And you, be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. Brethren, receive the word of God. Thank you very much. May I now invite all of us to stand up as we join the choir for the gradual hymn. Guide me, oh, thou great. 
standing for the gospel reading. Our gospel is taken from the gospel according to John, chapter 10 and verses 7 to 10. We read, therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to its full. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And good morning. Is somebody happy? Uh, prove that to your neighbor. Uh-huh. On both sides. Don't be selfish. Some of you, you came with somebody and uh, praise the Lord. I would like to welcome you to this nine o'clock service here at St. Francis Chapel, McKinley University. And I would like to welcome our online audience and, of course, the Church of Uganda family TV audience, that the Lord will similarly bless you as he's blessing us here. And we thank God for our partnership, particularly with Church of Uganda family TV, which is channel 375 on DSTV. And we would like to welcome, as our tradition holds, anyone who may be worshiping with us for the very first time. Those online, you can indicate it, but for you, you are here, please do stand if there is any. And there is always somebody. You are here for the first time. Please stand. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, anyone in the galleries? Uh, please, St. Franciscans, make these people feel very welcome. May God bless you as you worship with us, and may your first impression of worship with us be a lasting one, in every good sense. I would also like to welcome those who are not regular worshipers with us, for one reason or the other, you are in the right place. Amen. Last but not least, of course, is to welcome Mrs. Me, uh, Florence Asimwe, uh, who is here. I have to keep doing that. I have to keep doing that to send a message to young people, to young men. It's very important when you acknowledge your wife publicly. And the worst mistake you can ever make is to embarrass your wife publicly. That is very, very hard to correct. 
Now, I will make more announcements later, but for now, allow me to say that the preacher is in the house. The Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi. Canon John is a seasoned evangelist and formerly vice chancellor of Uganda Christian University. And uh, as you heard Seb pray, uh, Seb Tumusime, today is UCU Sunday, and so we start with that sister university of ours. We are not competitors. We pray that God will continue to use UCU as a center of excellence uh, in Africa. I don't know what that makes Makerele to be. Uh, that is arguable, but anyway. <laughs> that's, that's what it is as well. So, Canon John is, uh, is, is a familiar, is, is a household name really, uh, in many ways in Uganda and beyond. And today we are privileged uh, to be also worshiping with his dear wife. He will introduce him better. Uh, this is Canon, lay Canon Ruth, Canon Doctor Ruth Senyonyi. And, uh, and Doctor is PhD, you know, uh, medical. But she's uh, a counselor. She's also a renowned counselor. And those of you with challenges, get hold of her contacts after the service. But most of those challenges are going to be resolved as the message is proclaimed. Amen? In her own right, she's also the president of Mother's Union Church of Uganda. So you're welcome. You're welcome. And these two are wonderful uh, a wonderful couple. I look up to them myself as role models. Most of you think that uh, Mrs. Me and I are a hot couple. <laughs> but these are hotter. Um, they are lovebirds. They are lovebirds. They're wonderful people. And today, Canon John is speaking to us on the topic, Let My People Go. Tell your neighbor, God is saying today, Let My People Go. Say it one more time. Let my people go. Yes, my people. Amen. And before Canon comes to preach, let us invite the drama team with a skit. Look at yourself. Look at yourself, Chini. Nakupe. Sir, these are the prisoners, prisoner Moja Biri Tatu, that you told me to bring to you this morning. Sir. Sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, are you sure they are all here? Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I hope most of you, you were almost to be done with your punishment. But today, uh, I found out that uh, you, are, you are very uh, like a people that I am seriously in my moods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today, I want you to go home and be with your people. Uh-uh. 
What? Just. <laughs> Boss. Jerry! I've been used to this place. All oh, these are my friends. Why do I even start from? Jose. Ah, uh, me, I can't go anywhere. Boss, somewhere has please here. Mm. Now, boss, you see, me, I, I can't fit in the society. You know what I, what I committed? Uh, it will be hard for me to fit in. They will be calling me a rapist. A rapist. And with today's dress code of these ladies, I'll be tempted to do it again. Let me stay here. Let me stay here, please. Fanny? Eh? Sorry, yes, sir! Uh, these people, they still need to be here. Uh, take them back. Afande, 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 me I want to go home. Me I want to go home, Afande. My wife is at home and I left her pregnant. I want to go home for me. Me I want to go home. How sure are you that the wife is still? Uh, me I want to go home, Afande. Me I want to go home. You my friend now. Oh, my. Afande, I want to go and see for my wife. You want to go? Yes. You want I want to go see home? my wife. Are you sure you want to go home? Yes, Afande. Follow me to the office. Thank you, Afande. But she can't do me. No. They told you to go. You wanted to stay. Chini, lower, lower. Up, slowly. Up, up, slowly. Up, up. Arms distance. Arms distance. Gwe. Na kupiga wewe. Walk. Walk. Slowly, left, right, left. <laughs> they told you to go, you want to stay here. I will cane you today. You will see me. <laughs> and God has given us his, you know, salvation in Christ Jesus. But every day we refuse, we want to stay in bondage of sin. Enter! Well, good morning. It's wonderful to be here this morning. And the joy uh, for my dear wife and I. We came here earlier than you, although we are coming from Mukono, where we live in our honeymoon house. You know, those are the blessings of retirement. Yeah? You know when you're retired? For those of you who are still struggling with the school fees, uh, you wait a little longer. But the Lord has been so good. And so, that's my wife there. I don't think many people saw you. Can you kindly just come very quickly here? Yeah? We've been married for over 37 years. And uh, as you can see very well, it shows up on me, it doesn't show on her. Praise the Lord. We are so blessed to be here this morning. This is actually our church chaplain. When we got married 37 years ago, we started out here. This is where, so we, are, we still belong. Thank you for welcoming us. And uh, God has blessed us with four children and six grandchildren. Yeah? It's a beautiful life, isn't it? Really. But thank you very much, uh, Chaplain, uh, for welcoming us so warmly. And it's always a joy for us to be back. Uh, because when we got married, as she said, I was teaching in the Department of Mathematics here. And uh, we were living in Bat Valley Flats. And uh, I don't know if they are still under Makerere now. I'm not very sure. The ones across the road. That's where we're living. And uh, then we moved out and went to other things. But our children are all grown up. So that's why I say that we live in a honeymoon house. You know, where we started is where we are right now. In a house that was designed and supervised. Whose construction was supervised by our own son who is an architect. 
you know, those are blessings and for which we are truly uh, thankful to God. So it's a joy to be back to St. Francis. It's always really, really a delight. And uh, I'm going to be sharing with you on the topic, let my people go. Let my people go. And I think it has been amazingly presented to us here through that skit. And so I don't have to belabor that particular story, but it's a wonderful, wonderful presentation. I want to thank those who acted just as much as I want to thank the choir, uh, wonderful choir. I think uh, you better put in an application in heaven to sing, because otherwise you will be outdone by the angels and all those that stand around the throne of God. But such a joy to be here. Let, let us pray. Dear loving and gracious Father, we thank you that you are willing to speak to us. We also know that the opening of your word is by the illumination of your Holy Spirit. So I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to me, that he may speak through me. And I ask, dear Father, help me to decrease that only you increase, for that is the whole purpose of this work, of this ministry. And I thank you for Jesus. And so may you quieten whatever distractions, whatever noises there may be in our hearts, that only your voice will be heard. As you say to your people, let my people go. We thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let my people go. <clears throat> so that's quite an amazing kind of topic when you think about it. Because it presumes a kind of slavery. With God speaking, let my people go. And I hope that by the end of it, you will see why the Lord speaks. Now that happens in the book of Exodus. And it's repeated in Exodus. Again and again, God first says it in chapter 5, verse 1. Speaking to Pharaoh and telling Pharaoh, let my people go. Now if you are familiar with that particular passage... And I'm not going to read there. It all begins with Israel or Jacob going with about 70 members of his family to Egypt. And when they go there, they are escaping a scathing famine that was happening in the land where they dwelt in Canaan. And somehow God in his sovereign way chose that Israel would be the agency of salvation to Egypt. As even today, we know very well that it is through Israel that we have a savior. So when they got to Egypt, of course following on to Joseph who had gone on before, it's because of them that Egypt is spared complete destitution and possibly destruction. But after 400 years, of course, they have multiplied in number. Many Bible scholars estimate the number at more than a million by then, after 400 years. Probably about 1.4 million. And if you know the country of Egypt, I've been there. And I spent quite a few weeks in Egypt traveling and proclaiming Christ. And the populations of Egypt live by the Nile. There isn't much life outside the areas that surround the river Nile. And so you can imagine how many people 
This added to the small population of Egypt. So the Egyptians 400 years later are beginning to feel that these people are too many and they are overwhelmed. And as always happens with human beings, when you see that they are more foreigners than they are of you, you seek a way of suppressing them. And that's exactly what Egypt did. I know one country today, many of you may not be aware of, that has more foreigners than it has its own citizens. And that's the nation of Jordan, which has more Palestinians than the Jordanians. But you know, the Egyptians therefore turned to oppress and enslave the very people through whom God had spared them. And so when we pick up the story or the statement that God makes, God in his sovereign will is proclaiming the freedom of Israel out of Egypt through Moses. And so that's what we are talking about today. And this is not the kind of freedom that we get from human beings. I remember in 1986, the proclamation that was made by our president talking of a fundamental change. Those of you who are of age, you remember that. Others have probably heard it on television. But he said there is a fundamental change. And many Ugandans today are beginning to wonder whether there was a fundamental change at all. Because you see, friends, we were expecting political freedom, we were expecting anything. But that we would be able to sleep in our houses and not be attacked by those that were in power. That we would be able to own land without someone saying what you own, you do not own. That's what we wanted. But I want us to wake up to one reality. The freedom that is given by human beings is always provisional. It's always temporary. You may be promised one thing, but human beings are unable to sustain the freedom that they give you. And in more recent times, we have decided that we also want more and more moral freedom so that we can practice immorality freely. Nyege, nyege. Right? You know, for some reason, we, what was put here in the skit is so real, so real. That it does not matter how much the gospel is proclaimed. It does not matter how much God speaks to people. There will always be those that choose. That choose to remain in their sin. Because they are so used to it. And they call it pleasure. A friend of mine who is now dead. Preached, a, preached the gospel alongside him many times. His name was Kanon Yowa Senoga. He lived in Mokono. He used to illustrate it this way. That when you buy a hoe out of a shop and you bring it, it's brand new, the hoe is saying, I am going to eat the earth. And so as you dig, it celebrates the fact that it's doing the work for which it was bought out of the shop. I'm going to eat the earth. I'm going to enjoy myself. Pretty much the way many of us actually speak. People go to Nyege Nyege or some of the other pleasure centers simply because they're looking for an opportunity to enjoy life. To eat life. 
In Luganda, that's what we say. But you know, let me tell you something. And this is what Colonel Senoga would tell us. He would say, you start digging, and the hoe is enjoying itself. And it's being very productive and it's doing the work for which it was purchased. But if you keep on using it and using it, maybe after a year or two or so, the hoe unknowingly is reducing in size. And in Luganda, we have two words that are used because the time comes when you must take that hole which was much longer and it's now just a poor reflection of its beginning and we throw it away and we use it to get hot charcoal or hot ash. The hole when it comes out of the shop, we call it enkumbi. The hole that we throw away is called akasimo. And many people don't realize that in eating life, you get eaten by it. You get eaten by it. That is the real slavery. Because what sin does is to chew on you even as you think you are chewing on it. That's what it does. And it does not matter how much you may think you're enjoying your life. I have lived long enough. I'm on the sixth floor and approaching the seventh. And I have seen enough people who think they are chewing on life. But they end up being chewed by life. Friends, as we push for the moral freedom that we think will work for us, I want you to understand it doesn't work. Sin eats you faster than you eat it. You need to understand that. That's what sin does. Sorry, these things of ours... They cause us problems. Oh, well. Sin. So I'm talking to you, and I want to say three things very quickly that I do hope will speak to your heart if you're living without Jesus. Because you know, friends... I've walked with Jesus now for over 46 years. Over 46. And he has not done anything to make me think I should change. In fact, everything he has done tells me to keep on. That the freedom that he gave me is a freedom that's for real. Before I came to Christ, I thought to myself that I was enjoying freedom. When I came to Christ, I got to understand the real freedom that he gives. A young man at university, that's when I gave my life to Jesus. I was completing my first year. When a student spoke to me. Fortunately, I had, ha I had been exposed to the gospel in my local church in Nakasongola. The clergyman who was there was a man that had been converted in the revival. And I admired his life. In fact, the only thing that I could say of him is that here was a man that I could say he was blameless. Of course, I was not God, but his life was a challenge to me. So when the gospel was proclaimed to me, I said, yes, I want what that man has. By then he was still alive. And possibly you are here. You think you are free. 
that I'm speaking to you. Because many of us spend our life in things that we consider to be life. We spend our life in sexual immorality. You live with someone who is not your wife or your husband. For some of us, when we are very educated, we think we are more educated than God. And we forget the God who gave you the intellect. Look, I had my education. When I was at university, I was doing my mathemat mathematics. I eventually specialized in mathematical statistics. And I had no problem with mathematics, by the way, in case you do. Because you know what happened? In my first year, in spite of my sinfulness, because you see, I got saved the day after I finished my first year examinations. So I did my examinations as an unsaved person, and I got A's in every subject in mathematics I was given. A. That did not change the fact that the language that I spoke was filthy. It did not change the fact that sin was eating me away. It can eat you. That's why we are speaking about let my people go. Let my people go. And here are the three things that I want to say coming out of the passage in Genesis chapter 9 that was read for us. One, you are precious in God's eyes. You're precious. I want you to understand that God treasures you. If you've never understood what that means, let me explain it to you briefly. I want you to understand first and foremost that Jesus, who was without sin, without sin, he took on your sins and my sins. He was without sin. And this is because God was shouldering every sin and sinful life that you live in. He was shouldering everything terrible about you on his mighty shoulders on the cross. I want you to think that this Jesus, as he was put on the cross, he cried out in the middle of his breathlessness because the cross made you breathless. But this Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was separated from the eternal fellowship he had known with the Father. Why? Because of you. Because of me. If you want to understand how precious you are, look at the Son of God. Look at his work. Look at the cross. And say to yourself, why the cross? And yet he was doing it for you. He was not doing it for himself. That's how special you are. That's how precious you are in God's eyes. Now the passage that we are reading here tells us in verse 4, Genesis chapter 9, but you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is its blood. And for your lifeblood I will require reckoning. From every beast I will require it and from man. From his fellow man I will require reckoning for the life of man. In other words, your life is so precious that if anyone, beast or human, takes your life, you have a case. That person has a case to answer before God. That's how special you are. But he goes on. Listen to verse 6. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. And then listen to this. For God made man in his own image. 
As I look at you, my brother, my sister, God created you in his image. It's not the way you look. You may be light-skinned. You may have a pointed nose, which I don't have. You may have a nice head, which is not rounded like mine. But you were created in God's image. You're precious. That's why God chose that he was going to send his son. His son. That you who is wallowing in your weaknesses. You who is walking in your sin. You who is avowedly his enemy. As Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5. That now, he would give you the strength to walk. He would forgive your sin. He would make you his friend. Because as far as God is concerned, you are precious in his eyes. If I were you, I would say hallelujah. You are very special. And if you're not satisfied with that, let me tell you something. When God created man and he was lying there lifeless, God breathed divine life, divine image into his nostrils. Why? Because he said, this one is special. He did not do that with any other animal. You know that? He didn't do it with any other. No other creature on earth. Even if some of you are taught that your cousins to gorillas, listen. Some people even say that 97% of what we are is shared with the gorillas, but they don't account for the 3%. That's where it all matters. I am created in the image of God. So for that reason, because you are precious, when you are weak, when you are a sinner, when you are his enemy, he says, let my people go. He wants your freedom. He wants your freedom. Secondly, the second thing I want to talk about is in verse 1. Of that same chapter, 1 and 2, he says, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and say to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Listen, I want to repeat that. If you didn't hear it, this is what God says to Noah. It's a statement that he also said to Adam and Eve in chapter 1, verse 28. Listen to what he says. He says, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Oh, this God is amazing. That's why I have celebrated him all these years and I wait for the moment when I will get into heaven and I will be looking for that one and I don't think I will need to look, but I want to look at that one and look very closely at that one who bears the scars of the cross in his hands. That's the one I'm looking for. When I see him, I will be sure I'm in heaven. When I see you, I will not be too sure. You get that? If I don't see him, I won't know. But listen, I want to see you being hugged by those hands. You hear that? So God said, be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Let me talk to those of you who are younger people. Some of you are very, very mean with the children. You marry and you want to give birth to one or none. These days I'm hearing of people giving none. What are you up to? Unless you are unable. Listen. Huh? Unless you are able. God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. He was not saying fill the earth with grass. He was not saying fill the earth with snakes. He was not saying fill the earth. But listen, 
I better caution you also. A friend of mine who died in 2020, he, he was a Kenyan because for me I studied at the University of Nairobi, and he said, this, he, this friend of mine, he said he had only two children, two or three, I think it's two, because at least two that I know. And so people would tell him, but how can you give birth to only two? And his answer was very simple. When God gave that assignment, he didn't give it to me alone. I'm waiting to meet him in heaven. He's a dear, dear brother. I'm waiting to meet him in heaven because it hurt me so much I could not even bury him in Kenya. He was a Luo. He was a dear, dear brother. I walked with him at university. But he said, please, don't take that assignment on yourself alone. <laughs> Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Don't take on this western craziness. The western craze that says no children, we don't want children. My wife and I have stayed in the homes of these people. They are Christians and they're saying they don't want to have a child. And I said to myself, what? Don't you hear what the Lord said? They just don't want. They just don't want. Oh, I enjoy our children. They are lovely, lovely children because you see what God did was to bless. He blessed. That's how special you are. When God calls you and he says, come to me. When God says, let my people go, he also says, I want them to serve me. I want them to walk in fellowship with me that they may be blessed and multiply and fill the earth. I want them to be blessed. Now, some of us, we are told God wants to bless us, and we say, ah, not yet. Some of us, he says, I want to bless you. He says, no, 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 let me stay where I am. Isn't that what we saw in this kid? That's what this kid was saying. That some of us actually choose to continue living the life of slavery. We continue to live under Satan's feast. Instead of living in God's embrace. For me, I'm enjoying God's embrace. That's what I am. And I can never change from that. So God calls you. To bless you. That's what he does. He wants to bless you. He wants you to prosper. Yes, but not this prosperity that they talk about there. These church people. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I was teaching at the university here. Makere University. The Lord convicted me to get out of here. I was teaching mathematics. How many of you are mathematicians here? I want to see some. I had Professor Rubovi here who I taught with in that department. Good, I see some colleagues there. So I was teaching mathematics here. I had my PhD in mathematical statistics. Get it? But that's not my pride. It will never take me to heaven. No, it will never. And so... I was thinking to myself that the pittance that Makere was paying me, at that time I was earning 60,000 per month. 60,000. Some of you, no, I'm not talking about 600,000, I'm saying 60,000 per month. That's what I was earning. Okay? I remember it well. It wouldn't last more than two weeks. And so the Lord used Bishop Festo Chivengere to come and invite me out of here to go into preaching the gospel. And I struggled in my heart. How will I take care of my family? How? And so one day I walked. We had no car, so I walked. I was a university lecturer without a car. So I walked to Namirembe Cathedral. And I met a dear old mentor and friend who was the dean at the time, Methuselah Bujimbi. He's now in the, with the Lord too. 
Hey, many people have left. <laughs> so I went to him and I asked him, I have a problem because he was someone that I always sought counsel from. And I say to him, I'm struggling. I feel the Lord is calling me to this ministry. How will I take care of my family? I did not know that when God calls, he blesses. He blesses. I was not going to start stealing money. I was not going to start conning congregations. You give and the Lord will bless you. That's not what I was going to do. I was going to bring the gospel of Jesus to others. And Bishop Ujimbi, no, he wasn't a bishop yet at that time. The dean, he said to me, have you ever seen the children of a clergyman failing to raise fees for their studies except those who misbehave? Hmm. I searched my mind. And I could see none. I left Namirembe Cathedral determined, Makerere bye-bye, I'm going into ministry to proclaim Jesus. Now, the story doesn't end there. Like I told you, we have four children, because you see, the thing that I had been struggling with was that there were so many clergy that I looked at and I thought they were poor. But they did, I did not understand how wealthy clergy are. Clergy are not wealthy because they have a lot of money. Clergy are not wealthy because somehow they have many houses. God just makes us rich in his own way. Listen, all my children, all our children have done university education. Two of them even have masters. All of them well qualified in their fields. All of them. Our youngest son Studied in Germany. He refused actually to come to Makere. He was admitted here for electrical engineering. He said, on government sponsorship. We even argued with him. We said, you, do you really think we have money to take you abroad? He said, for me, I'm going. Long story short, this young man was studying and needed over 30,000 euros. Over 30,000 euros per year. Per year. We didn't have that money. Did he study? Yes. Did he complete? Yes. And he's now working in Berlin as an analytics engineer. Whatever that means. <laughs> Friends, what I'm saying to you, when God says, I'll bless you, he blesses. I have never Said in my pocket, I have 30,000 euros to pay. All I know is that God has taken care of everything. Now for you who is not saved, thinking, ah, what will I do with this? What will I do with that? I am giving you the assurance. He says, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Not with many children, but fill the earth. <laughs> Be responsible. This is, the, this is the God we are talking about. That he wants us to be people that are blessed. But the problem with us is all the time we are saying, but I'm still enjoying my life here. And we don't want... To come to this God, because you see, he's going to stop me from doing this. He's going to stop me. And we look at what God is going to stop us from. Listen, I have heard the testimony of our president, because he walked with Christ at some point. He usually says, <laughs> I was saved and I'm not. But listen, I'm not going to go that way. Let me go to the third point and then I can conclude. Thirdly, thirdly, listen to this. First of all, we said, you are precious in his eyes. Secondly, we said, God wants to bless you. Thirdly, he says, I want you to be my steward. My steward. That's what he says. Hallelujah. Let me just point you to Genesis chapter 2, 
And uh, I want to point you from verse 5. I'll just read a little of that so that I don't have to go too long and then I want to shut up. Listen to what he says. When no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, in other words, no vegetation. Why? He gives the reason. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land and there was no man to work the ground. The reason why God created vegetation later was because of you. He wanted to entrust you with the responsibility to look after the earth. He wanted to make you his vice regent. And then for some of us, we say, no, I don't want to be his vice regent. I don't want to serve God. I don't want to be his steward. Listen, God says, when I bring you to myself, I up your status. That's what he does. He ups his, your status. I have no regrets leaving, you, leaving uh, Makere University. No, I don't. Because I know God upped my status. I have no regrets coming to the Lord Jesus Christ in 1976 as a young university student. Why? Because when I came to Christ, he upped my status. He made me better than I can ever think of. That's what he does. When he saves you, he makes sure you have it. Listen to what he says in verse 5. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. And then what does he do next? Then he plants the Garden of Eden. And in verse 8, what do we read? And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there... Who did he put there? He does not say I put there elephants. He does not say I put there a lot of trees. He does not say I put there this and that. He was planting that garden for you and for me. That's it. Isn't it amazing how God loves you? Isn't it amazing how much God has invested in you? Isn't it amazing that this God actually wants to give you more than what you think you have now. And I'm not promising houses and all that. That's not what I'm promising. But listen, the contentment I have, they don't have those who have a lot. Psalm 4 actually says something like that. That I have more joy in my heart than they have when their wine and grain abound. They may have what they have, but I have Jesus. And that matters the most. Because the moment you have Jesus in your heart, you have become not VIP. These days they have even started saying VIIP. So when you say VIIP, God says, okay, you add another I for my own. VIIIP. Friend, I want to invite you to embrace that Jesus. I want you to say to Jesus, today I'm giving my life to you. I want you to be able to say, I want to begin this journey with the Lord. That I too, having understood how precious I am in, in his eyes, having understood how much I'm on his heart, having understood what Jesus did for me on the cross, having understood that you will invite me to, be, to bless me, having understood that you're going to take care of everything that I need, that even those things that I worry about, you are concerned about, and you want to walk with me. If it is tough times, you want to walk with me. If it is easy times, you want to walk with me. Having understood that, and having understood that you are inviting me to be your vice regent. You say, I'm coming, Lord Jesus. I want to give my life to you. Who wants to do that? You say, I'm willing and I want to give my life to Jesus. Just put up your hand. Anyone? I'm inviting you. And I'm saying, if you came in here, you're not saved. And you're saying today, I must go out with this Jesus. Just put up your hand. Yes. God bless. Upstairs, downstairs, 
Everyone, you say yes. I'm giving my life to Jesus. Is there someone else? Someone. Yes, welcome my brother. Come here. Any other person, you're saying yes. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. I want to be his. Come. Just keep on coming. Just keep on coming. Because what Jesus gives here is much more than you can ever get elsewhere. The only thing that you get from a life elsewhere is simply a wasted life. A life like we used to sing, wasted years, wasted years. They were all wasted years. But now I'm saying to you, come, come. Is there someone else? You're saying, yes, I want to come to this Jesus. Don't hold on there. Let me tell you something. You saw those people there? He wanted, that gentleman there wanted to, wanted his freedom. And he was invited to the office. The other two were trying to dissuade him. Let me tell you the last story and then we'll be done. It was in Ginger. And one of our evangelists that we were with were doing a mission there. In a church like this, two ladies, both of them business women, were seated next to each other. They worked together. They did their business together. And so when the invitation to come to Christ was given, one of them felt like going, but as she was trying to get up, the other one held her dress and told her, don't, don't, don't. Just like those who are trying to dissuade their friend from going to freedom. Eventually, this lady managed to get up and go to get her freedom. Let me tell you something. The following week, at the funeral of the one who was holding her dress because she died in Mavira Forest in an accident. And this is a real story. She died in Mavira. And this one who got up and went and received Christ, she told the story and she said, my friend was holding my dress to stop me, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. What a heart-rending story to get out of this life without Jesus. Because the Bible is very clear. Hebrews 9:27. It's appointed for men to die once. And after that comes judgment. There is no peace. May God's peace rest on you. No, there is no, none of that. It doesn't work. You've got to make the decision now. One more time, I want to say, if you're willing to give your life to Jesus, stand up and come quickly. Can I ask everybody maybe to stand up? Everybody there, these can stay here, but everybody there, stand up. And if you know you're saying yes to Jesus, just walk. Because you may say there are too many legs that are stopping me. Well, legs need not stop you. Just come. Just come. And I'm giving you that opportunity to surrender your life. Welcome, my dear. Welcome. Any other person you're saying yes? I'm giving my life to Jesus. Is there any other person? Welcome. Welcome, my dear. And it gives me great joy to know that young people are coming twice. That's not to say those who are older shouldn't. But I know how Satan wastes a life so young. Is there someone else? Quickly. I don't know who I'm going. I see the chaplain. I hope the rapture hasn't happened. But, uh, <laughs> yes, come. Come. Yes. You see, there are still people coming. Any other person? If you are, even when I hand over, you still can come. Because the Jesus who saves is right here before us. And he's here to save. Amen? He's here to save. Amen. So let me hand over to Reverend Irene. If you could kindly take this and help him. Thank you. You can take your seats. We are going to say, to repeat these words after me. As you raise your right hand, say, Lord Jesus. I need you. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. 
Thank you for loving me. Today, the 24th of September, I surrender my life to you. Come into my life and be my Lord God and Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Help me to live for you. Today I'm born again. I'm a new creature. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Church, stretch out your hand and we pray for these people that God will sustain them in this salvation. It's one thing to accept Christ, but another to continue in this salvation. Father Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. Your word say that there is great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. Lord God, there must be great, great rejoicing over these that have come to know you. Heavenly Father, we pray for them that you sustain them, that your grace will sustain them in this salvation, that this journey they have begun today, that you will hold them with your mighty righteous hand, that they walk closely with you, O King of glory. Heavenly King, help them. They are helpless without you. Help them, O King of glory, to live for you, to walk with you in this journey till you call them home. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not uh, taking over from uh, the Reverend Irene because I'm the chaplain. I'm just excited about these uh, people. Let's clap to the Lord. This, this is a big harvest. It's a big harvest. And uh, in the 7 o'clock service, there were two Muslims among those who got born again. Two Muslims. You know? Uh -huh. Are you also one? Also a Muslim, but I've decided to go to Wow, wow, wow. Did you hear that? Come, come, come here. Now in, in Christianity we can't even touch you. Say it again. My name is Naidu Salma. I've been a Muslim, but, but I've decided to convert to the Christian. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. This is a day of uh, Muslims seeing the light. Let my people go, hallelujah. Now, among those, uh, actually, this is why I came and hijacked the mic. There is, uh, there is also our daughter there. You, you, you stand. The Lord has brought her into our lives. You go and give your mom there a big hug there. No, it should be you instead. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that's, that's where I got very excited. Yeah. If you don't have a nugu, please clap to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please sign those uh, uh, right on, on, the, on the cards. I hope they are pens. We are supposed to be giving them pens, by the way. Because people don't come to church these days with pens. They come with phones. With... So, but find a way. Find a way of filling those forms. And after the service, listen to me, after the service, we shall meet in the tent. There is a tent out there. Amen? Please do stand and go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's invite the Bethel Judah to lead us in a song as we bring our gifts to God. But first, let's appreciate the man of God who... Yeah. He preaches with, with passion and unction. And you, you just you see the gospel all over him. 
<laughs> you just see the gospel. You see a soul winner as he's preaching. He's a, and then he's so articulate. I don't know whether you were supposed to be a mathematician or a lawyer, maybe. <laughs> okay. Let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God. Amen.
Thank you, Father, for you make impossible things possible. We have seen you do great and mighty things in this service. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for saving souls. And for your servant, Canon Dr. John Senyonyi, Lord, who has offered himself to be used of you greatly. It is for, it was for freedom that Christ set us free indeed. Now help us to walk in that freedom, even in financial freedom. And we thank you for the money that has been given. And we pray that you would receive it and set it apart for the expansion of your kingdom and bless all those who have given. For it's more blessed to give than to receive and father provide for those who are not able to give because they do not have you are Jehovah Jireh our provider in Jesus name we pray amen amen because we have repented and we are now prepared to come to the Lord's table for the Lord's Supper. We will all humble ourselves. You may sit or kneel if you can as we join together in the prayer of humble access. We do not come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your great mercy. We are not good enough even to eat the crumbs that fall from your table, but you never change. It's the very nature of your being always be merciful. We therefore humbly ask you, gracious Lord, to let us eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, so that our sinful lives may be purified by his precious blood, and that we may dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We praise and thank you, our Redeemer and Father, for your glory and love. We praise you for giving your Son for us and for his suffering and death, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we do this in remembrance of him. With this bread and with this cup, we celebrate his perfect sacrifice made once and for all upon the cross. We proclaim his resurrection from the dead and his ascension, and we look for the fullness of his coming in glory. Accept, therefore, this sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For Christ, who loves us, and who gave himself for us, we give you thanks, O Lord. Amen. His death we proclaim, and his coming we await. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Beloved, draw near with faith and partake of this holy sacrament, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
Oh, the blood. 
to reconcile man to the Father and to bridge the chasm that was between man and God. And now we can access that eternal fellowship with the Father as well. Thank you for demonstrating this in the message we received earlier and for the response to the gospel. Thank you also for feeding us with your body and with your blood. And this is an assurance that indeed we are eternally saved. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will request uh, the praise team to stay uh, as I make very few announcements. Uh, you know you can access them online. Well, first it is to highlight the women's encounter. I beg your pardon. It has always been women, women, women. This time it's the men's encounter retreat. And um, may I ask you, Gab, I know you're good at these things, to in one minute give us the highlights. They asked me to request Gab because he's a, a celebrity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today morning, the Lord brought to my remembrance my first encounter retreat. I went for that retreat a couple of months before our wedding. And uh, when we were speaking in our small group, I remembered that there's somebody with whom uh, basically our relationship had broken down. And I had one cry. I wanted that relationship mended before the wedding day. It seemed impossible for me, and so with the small group, we committed it to God. Three days after the encounter retreat, this person called me and said, your wedding is soon. We haven't heard from you. Can you and your wife come and see us? The Lord restored a relationship that was so dear to us because we asked him to, and our brothers believed with us. From that day, from that year, I haven't missed the encounter. It's been 12 years now. And at every encounter, God has done something amazing for me and for the men who come. Gentlemen, if you're in the room today, would like to invite you for this year's men's encounter retreat. This is a special one because for two years, we haven't had the retreat. The men are already praying for each one of you. All you need to do is avail yourself. Our theme is man in the mirror. When you stand in the mirror today, I hope you can see the image of God. When you come for the retreat, it is our prayer that you will not see physically what you are, but you will see the Christ in you. So register. We have a, a link that we are using, but if you don't have access to that link, just go to uh, the table outside. Someone will register you. For those that have already registered, please make your payments uh, so that the team is able uh, to go ahead with all the preparations. God bless you as you make the decision to come, but I guarantee you, it's a decision you will never regret. Amen. Good. Uh, the marriage encounter retreat was announced last Sunday by none other than Dr. Tom Mwambu. I uh, continue to register. And finally, uh, to just appreciate the ministry of Father's Union and Mother's Union, uh, come, young lady, uh, Leticia, and you, gentlemen. Now, first of all, this gentleman, does he resemble somebody you know? This is Engineer Moses Palabako, the chairman of Father's Union, and he's a brother to the preacher of the day. Uh -huh. The preacher only introduced his wife and forgot his brother, so... And uh, Leticia is the chairperson of Mother's Union, the president of Happy Wives Club, Uganda. That's what she calls herself, uh, but I think you need to compare notes with Mrs. Me. You may compete for, for the title. And uh, yesterday they, had, they organized a health walk. So they brought many people to walk, to exercise. Tell your neighbor, your body is the temple 
of the Holy Spirit. Now some of us just eat and sleep, eat, sleep, 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 eat, sleep. And then you hear high blood pressure, you have sugar. You... So, this was very, very important. And I want to encourage you to uh, make it a regular exercise. Regular. I missed the one of yesterday, but I will be present in the next one. And you will notice that I'm still fit as well. So God bless you. Let's appreciate these people. <clears throat> Let me now finally invite the LDC students. Uh, if you're here, you're beginning your exams tomorrow. Okay, there's a nine. All right. Nobody? Uh, why? So, <laughs> you lawyers, why, why were you? You don't have time. We're already encroaching on the 11 o'clock service time. These people are going to start their exams tomorrow. And uh, LDC, if you have heard about LDC, it's, uh, it's quite uh, that backos. Now, there's a time we dedicated those candidates. All of them passed. All of them. Yeah, I am sure some of them are here. You are here, yeah. You see, they have a witness. All of them, there's another witness here. All of them passed. LDC exam. They all passed. And they returned to give thanks. So we are going, I'm going to request Canon John to come and pray for you and pronounce benediction upon all of us. We are going to participate as a church. Please stretch your hands upon these um, lawyers. We need lawyers who are Christian, who love the Lord, men and women of integrity. Let us pray. Dear loving and gracious Father, we thank you so much for these your children. And we thank you that they can stand before you in recognition that you are Lord of all. It's not their wisdom, it's not their intellect. For even those are a gift that comes, that comes from you. And so we thank you that you have brought them this far. Even now as they prepare to sit for the examinations at LDC. We commit them to you. You know how much effort they've put in. And we ask that you reward them abundantly. And enable them to go through those examinations with peace in their heart, shalom itself. And that they will be able to read and not panic, not fear, because you are with them. When they enter the examination rooms, enter it with them. And we ask that you will bring back to memory that which they have learned and use it effectively in answering the questions before them. And we not only pray for the examinations, but we also look at their future when they begin practicing. Believing that they are going to pass these examinations, we ask that they will carry the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever they will be found. And so watch over them, draw them closer to yourself, and fill them with the fullness of Christ in their life. To the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's pray. Can I ask the rest of you to stand up, please, as we pray the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be with you, our friends who are sitting examinations starting tomorrow. And may that blessing be with each and every one of you. And for with those especially who have given their life to Jesus today, may that blessing watch over you and keep you and never leave you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Let us clap to the Lord for the wonderful service we've had. And uh, let us appreciate the preacher. And we look forward to having you again and again. In fact, uh, we are preparing for the family Sunday, which will be on the 16th of October. All right? So note that date as well. Um, the, the next semester, which is the first semester, will start on 1st October with continuing students. And then the freshers will come on the 8th of October, and we shall have that whole week, uh, which is usually the freshers' week, uh, orientation week, which is at the same time our university mission week. So uh, from 8th to 16th, the climax will be 16th, which will be a family Sunday. We shall have only one service uh, starting at 9 AM and we shall announce the venue. Um, but we are hoping that he should be back uh, to, to preach. And, and the, clapping, the clapping says everyone has, is saying, come, come again, come again. Let us appreciate uh, Bethel Judah uh, for your ministry and for always looking, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. And the drama team, they did a good job. The ushers, the audio visual people, to God be the glory. Let us now go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. Amen. The response is, some of you have not responded. The response is, we go in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us now joy, uh, uh, joyfully. <laughs> Let us now go into the world to love and serve the Lord. In the name of amen, amen. Our session to him, please.